In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of thrombosis. And we've talked about endothelial injury of Virchow's triad. And now we're going to talk about stasis and turbulence of blood flow. So let's scroll down here. So number two is alterations in normal blood flow. And there's two parts. There's turbulence and stasis. So first, let's talk about turbulence. And first, we need to talk about, this is a blood vessel. We need to talk about normal physiological blood flow. And there's a concept that's called laminar blood flow. So what laminar blood flow is, is you can imagine laminar meaning kind of a, a sheet or uniform blood flow. So what happens in laminar blood flow is that the blood in the middle of the blood vessel flows the fastest. So this is fastest. And blood flow that's along the, the edges of the blood vessel are the slowest. And what this blood, this, so down long arteries and the aorta and, and different things, there's, there's laminar blood flow. And when, you know, they flow in sheets and it, it's, it's kind of uniform. And if you look at the blood vessel on end here, uh, slow blood is around the outside and fast blood just zipping down the pipe is on the inside. And so what this does is there's there's kind of like the the platelets and the bigger molecules they kind of fly down the middle of the pipe and the plasma is kind of around around the edge uh, around the edge here and what the plasma does is it creates kind of a blanket or a cushion from this the these endothelial cells here um, and keeps and keeps kind of the platelets and the other bigger molecules away from this these sides. And remember, in the case of the intrinsic coagulation cascade, uh, the intrinsic coagulation cascade, all it needs is a surfing, surface contact to initiate that cascade. So this plasma kind of helps, kind of helps blanket or cause a cushion in between these two the endothelial cells and the platelets and the other factors. And what in the case of, let's say you got some plaque here. This is, uh, you know, an atheroma or an arteriosclerosis. You got, you got plaque, plaque here building up. And what, what happens with this blood flow is you can imagine that this blood flow just the normal the the fast stuff just keeps no problem it keeps zipping down the pipe and this stuff kind of has to squeeze in around and this stuff for sure hits here and it causes turbulent blood flow you know the path of the molecules are are different you know and it can kind of slow it down and then what happens here is you can you, know, you can create these you know these back currents here especially and it, this is messes up the flow of the blood and what happens is you're mixing all these all the content and you're also causing right here little pockets of that are prone to stasis or they're stagnant and that is a huge component of of a thrombus formation or blood flow or blood clots. So turbulence and stasis cause, uh, can disrupt laminar flow and bring platelets into contact with the endothelium. Like I said, these platelets are here in the center. If you get this turbulent blood flow with the blood kind of going all around, these platelets are kind of bumping up against this endothelium and that can cause the coagulation cascade. It also prevents the dilution of activated clotting factors by fresh blood flow. So if this stagnant blood flow is kind of sitting here, you know, new blood is always, you know, has is caught can cause dilution 
dilution of these um, activated clotting factors which kind of sweep it down sweep it down the pipe and so the coagulation cascade can't really uh, get in get in to get get going and another thing too is that that this fast this in these bigger arteries how the blood is really moving down the pipe it's hard for these platelets to even even if they do wander over here and they attach well the the sheer uh, flow and the force is just going to push it on down the pipe so that's another reason why stasis is, can be dangerous it also can retard the inflow of clotting factor inhibitors and permit the buildup of a thrombi remember that these endothelial cells if you have these endothelial cells here remember that they're secreting anti-thrombotic chemicals and if you know the turbulent flow here is not you know it's kind of just sitting here making swirls well then it's hard for these clotting these uh, clotting factors that are inhibitory to kind of be secreted out into the into the bloodstream and they also promote uh, turbulence and stasis promotes endothelial cell activation that results in local thrombus leukocyte adhesion etc etc and you know that process process continues so let's now move on to some examples in the case of an ulcerated atherosclerotic plaques what that does is, is in the case of this if these plaques sit here what's going to happen is this is going to cause inflammation this plaque adhering to this side right here is going to cause inflammation you can review the inflammation videos on what happens exactly but these these uh, you know inflammation is a huge free radical producer and it damages these uh, endothelial cells and they undergo necrosis or apoptosis and what happens is it exposes the sub endothelial ECM um, to, to the blood and then the von Willebrand factor in the extracellular matrix is going to cause a thrombus or a blood clot it also causes turbulence how I described here is creating uh, you know it disrupts this laminar smooth flow and then causes these currents I believe those are called eddy currents by the way I'll have to look into that abnormal also another example is abnormal aortic and arterial dilatations or aneurysms in the same thing if I have a blood vessel here an aneurysm is just a big out you know a big pocket a big pouch if you will in a blood vessel and you can imagine as this laminar flow as this blood is flowing down the pipe you know what's going to happen is it's going to come off here and it's going to hit here and bounce around it's going to start swirling and what happens is this is this is stasis this causes um, stasis this is this causes abnormal blood flow and what's going to happen is when you have this uh, blood flow or this blood just sitting here and pooling it's going to start um, creating a blood clot in the case of acute myocardial infarction or a heart attack you have you know the heart part of the heart is non is non contractile or I mean, I mean it's not it's not pumping so and if you have a heart here and you know in the case uh, you know some artery that supplies blood to the heart you know gets cut off well this heart this heart tissue right here might die and it's not and it's not um, contracting it's not working the blood is is the blood that was in there is pooling and you know when the cells try to remodel what happens is there could be an aneurysm right here an aneurysm might form which causes the same problem as this in the case of mitral valve stenosis so there's just mark the examples uh, mitral valve stenosis after rheumatic heart disease that results in left atrial dilatation and you can imagine that if I have you know a heart you know and I have some valves here and then I have the ventricle here it's just one side of the heart if I have this narrowing here of this of this uh, mitral valve you know in the left side of the heart well then blood is going to be returning into the atrium here 
and this is going to cause the atrium of the heart on the left side to become uh, expanded, to balloon out. And when this atrium balloons out, you know, there can be little pockets of, of blood in here that will form blood clots. And when this left ventricle pumps out the blood, some of these blood clots might come in here, and then they might get pumped out into the circulation, and that's not going to be a good thing. So the last but not least is these hyperviscosity syndromes. As polycythemia increases the resistance to flow and can cause small blood vessel stasis. So as the blood is coming down the vessel, you know, there's little... Uh, offshoots if you will and you know this blood coming down can kind of come into this blood into the smaller blood vessel and get kind of lodged right there and come down and start lodging and that can cause uh, stasis which is highly prone to blood clots and also the sickle cell anemia um, you know the the cells red blood cells are usually biconcave if you're looking at it on end, something like that, and it kind of comes in and it kind of comes in by concave both sides. And while the sickle cell, they change the shape and it, they can get clogged in here and that can cause vascular occlusions, which lead to stasis and stasis leads to thrombus formation. So that concludes the video and I hope uh, we've learned a little bit about turbulence and stasis and how that can contribute to pathological formation of a blood clot or thrombosis. We'll see you in the next video.